right, Beza Hashem, Besiyati Deshmai, it's coming up to Shavuot. So I always use this opportunity, it's like a valdig opportunity, to start to learn a little bit of the halachas of Basa B'cholim, a little bit of a crash course. Let's try and cram in, in the next few days, as much as we possibly can, to know about Basa B'cholim. And the reason for that is, first of all, Shavuot. Shavuot is a time, as we will explain, that people are busy with milchiks and fleishiks. Milchik sudas, milchik kiddush, we'll talk about it, Beza Hashem. But even without that, every single one of you, Basiyata Dishmay, Beiza Hashem, Beitu Bizman, are going to get married. And your wife's going to ask you, Shaila, Shleimala, how do I do this? What happened to the. And you'll be like, I don't know. You've got to know these things, right? I met a guy once who says to me, because <clears throat> I came out with a book, and he says to me, Oh, I don't need your book. I said, Oh, psh, well, psh, I guess you know that lochus. He said, No, I don't need to know that lochus. Whenever I have a Shaila, I just chuck it out. That's what I do. Every single time I have a shayla of Cholov, I just check it out. So, hello? Baltashim is a shayla of a daraisa. Basav Cholov is most often a darabonon. So a person has to be very, very careful. I, um, before I once gave a series of shurim in yeshiva, so someone said to me, what? You're teaching Basav Cholov to Bachlum? What do they have to know these things for? It's not a gay to them. So I went to Rabbi Chaim Kenyevsky. I said, Rebbe, what do I, should I teach Bachlum? Is it the right thing to do? Maybe it's too hard, maybe. Father, my father should teach Bachlum, he told me. That's what he told me. So, Be'ez Hashem, that Hagdama in mind, we are going to start a little bit of the halachas of Basav Chalot. And they are very, very important for many, many different ways. We've got a Deiraisa level and we've got the Durabana level. And we'll be talking about them um, in the next coming days, Besiyat HaDishmayo. Let me just start with this Hagdama. There's a Modik Chinuch. The Chinuch of Mitzvah Kuf Mem Zayn brings down a Gewaldig Yisoyed. And it's a Yisoyed you have to remember for our whole lives. The Chinuch says that it's your Dua. As I state in the Chinuch, it's your Dua, everyone knows. That that which you eat, very much affects the way your body reacts and works. And he says the same as that's true in a physical way, it's also true in a spiritual way. That means, and the Gemara talks about this in Baba Kama, that a person eats something that's not 100% kosher will actually affect the way, in a physical way, his body reacts. As I state in the Chinuch, which is an incredible, incredible thing. That's number one. Number two, you have to know as well. There's a timtum halev. You know what timtum halev means? You know there are many people that open up, and it's rabbi, rabbi say, it's, it's nebuch, laoleinu. We should never know such things. That people open up a Gemara and they're like, Rebbe, it's not geshmak. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy Gemara. I don't enjoy learning. I don't enjoy davening. I, I, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't get it. It's not for me. You know what often the problem is? The timtum halev. Timtum halev means the layers and layers and layers of spiritual blockage. From what? from eating things that are not kosher, from eating things that are not 100% good, la halacha, which means that that's how important these halachas are. They're not just halachas that, okay, you know, you eat kosher, you don't eat kosher, you try, you didn't try. It actually affects not only your guv, it affects how your heart, how your neshama actually performs. And that's a very, very important thing. I'll tell you, Amorita Kamaisa, there's a tshuva in the Chassam Soifa. Halika Chassam Soifa. Some Sofa brings the following tshuva. Interesting, Shaila. Parent came to him and they told him the following. They said, Rebbe, our son is very, very sick. He has a mental illness. He needs serious, serious therapy. He needs serious work. There is an institution in our area that deals specifically with this. Specifically with this problem. Can we send him? And they asked him the Shaila because in this institution you have to stay there. You cannot... Once you go, you cannot leave. In other words, you have to stay there for an extended period of time. They only serve non-kosher food, and nobody's allowed to bring kosher food. That's the shayla they asked like some sofa. Are we allowed to bring our son into such an institution? There's no way of getting kosher food. You have, we have to put him in for his mental health. But he's going to eat non-kosher. Mutur asa. You know what the some sofa said? He said, Avadav, it's mutter. For his health, he needs it. Of course, it's okay. But you should know that it won't help. You know why? Because of the timtum alev that's caused by eating not kosher, whatever they do is going to be reversed by that. So a person has to realize, this is a very, very serious, the Gemara Baba Kama says, that before a person learns Torah, before the Torah goes in, a person has to make sure what goes into his, what he ingests in his mouth, in his stomach, to make sure that it's kosher. Tell you a Medrash, which is the gay now, which is why we're starting these halachas. A Medrash. Many of us are familiar with this medrash, but it's good to mention again this medrash. The medrash tells us that we know that the Malachim came to visit Avram Avinu to be Mavaka 
He just had a bismillah, he was in pain, he was a choyla. And the malachim came to visit. And the Gemara tells us in Bam that what did he give these malachim? He gave them, the Gemara says, he gave them three tongues in mustard. You look at the psukim, there was the milk over there. What's the of? What's going on? So that's exactly what happened. The Medrash tells us, some Sofa brings it, Parash of Eira. The Medrash says that when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai, to be Makabal the Torah, Kabbal the Satayra, the Malachim said, huh? How could you give the Torah to this nation? Egel Azov, what's going to be? These people are not going to keep the Torah. What did Avram Avinu, what did Moshe Rabbeinu respond? Moshe Rabbeinu responded, Ah, you guys, you Malachim, what did you eat when you came to visit Avram Avinu? Basavacholov, you guys also don't keep the Torah. We can have the Torah. Okay? Uh, there's other Midrash which we'll get to before Shavuos to explain different things. But that's one version of the Medrash which Chassam Seifer brings, a Medrash in Parashat Veira. So, let me ask you a question. Where's Basavacholov? We'll talk about Basavacholov, exactly how it's also, how it's motto. But, the stipler, in Birch's parrots, Parashat Veira asked the Kasha, where's Basavacholov? They ate one after the other. So the the the, the, the stipend is a modic chiddush that he tiny is that because of the goof of a of a body of a malach is fire. So kiilu when they ate the meat and they ate the milk, even though it was separate times, it was cooked, it was being special inside their body. That's basa A Very big chiddush. Very big chiddush. That's what the stipend says. Hasam Saif goes on and he says, hold on a minute. Look at the seder hadvarim of the psukim. The seder hadvarim of the psukim is that first they ate the milk and then they ate the meat. What's the problem? What's the problem with the milk and then the meat? If they would have eaten the meat first and then the milk, oh, I hear, maybe it was in six hours, we'll talk about that. But they ate the milk first, huh? Mabaya, where's Basim Acholov? Answers to some soifa, because they missed the halacha. And that halacha is kinuach bahadacha, which we will explain, which is to wipe out your mouth between the milk and the meat. And because of that, Moshe Rabbeinu was zoicha to bring down the Torah to Klal Yisrael. Says the some soifa gavaldi, that you see from here, one little tiny, even though it's not tiny, but the way we express it, little halacha, it's a drabonon, washing out your mouth between milk and meat. We'll talk about it, a lot of the details, exactly what that means. It's a choshev. That's what brought down the Torah to Klal Yisrael. Okay, Rabbi, so without further ado, let's move on. Let's talk about the halachas. Let's go into it, uh, various different halachas that we have to discuss in this Indian. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with the Hagdoma today, and Be'ez Hashem tomorrow we'll move on to some of the Daraises, followed by the Durabonos, probably in that order. The Torah tells us, Loi Savashal Gdi Imoi. You must not, literally, cook a kid in its mother's milk. Okay? Says the Shulchan Aruch, in your day in the beginning of Simon Pei Zayin. Why does the Torah say three times? Three times on the Torah we find, Loi Savashal Gdi Bechalei Imoi. Why do we need all three? Why is it there three times? And the Shulchan Aruch says very clearly, and this is Allah Chalam Aysa, to teach us three separate Isurim. Again, it's a Gemara in Chulin. And the three separate Isurim are number one, there's an Issa to cook, which we will talk about. Number two, there's an Issa to eat, and number three, there's an Issa also to have Hano, to have benefit from which we will explain as we move on. Okay? Now, before we continue with that, I want to just give you a little bit of an insight into why. Why is Basta B'chol of Asa? Why is Basta B'chol of Asa? So, the Chinuch, when he brings down the Mitzvah, Mitzvah Tari base, brings down that it's like Shatnas. It's like Kilayim. Do we understand it? It's a Choyk. We, we have no understanding. Does anyone understand why you can't wear Shatnas? Is there a logical explanation to Kilayim? No. And therefore Basta B'chol is the same. Meaning there are certain things that the Rabbi Nishalayim doesn't want you to mix. And, as I state, in the Chinuch. The Rambam, the Ma'achmet Sisuris, brings down a different reason. And the Rambam says that because, and again, he goes to explain the whole Seyda Dvaram, which we're not going to go into, but he says that they used to do Avod Zorah by, by cooking Basav HaKhalav. That was what they did. And therefore, in order for us to stay away from Basav HaKhalav, from Avod Zorah, we can't do Basav HaKhalav. And that's the Rambam's reason, that's the second reason, possibly, why we can't do it. Devin Ezra, ala Torah. Devin Ezra says, he says it's cruelty. And he, and, he, and he compares it to the halacha, the pasuk, that you cannot shecht a, 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 a mother and its child on the same day. You don't have to shecht a parent and a child of an animal on the same day. 
See, he tainted its cruelty to go and cook, is that what the Pasuk told us, a kid in its mother's own milk. And therefore, that's the reason. I, all milkers are set in a khanami, all milk are to its mother's milk, because you don't know which milk that you're dealing with. As I state in has a very, very interesting reason. There's another reason, Rabbeinu Bachaya. Rabbeinu Bachaya brings in Parshus Mishpatim. Another reason. And he says that milk ultimately really comes, where does it come from? It comes from blood nursing mother. And therefore, says Rabbeinu Bachaya, if you mix meat, which was blood, together with milk, so the milk turns back into blood, and you're eating blood in its asa. There is a zoya, that the zoya says that meat is din, and milk is rachamim, and you can't mix din and rachamim, and all sorts of things, and the zoya talks terrible things about a person that eats arboim yoyim, 40 days, what they're announcing in Shomayim, for a person that eats such a thing, it's kefalach. So these are the basic reasons why Basa V'cholov is Asa and why it's important to know that we have to be careful for these halachas. And these halachas are very, very nagea, right? A lot of you think that's not so nagea to me, right? I mean, it's a shame you're going to get married, it can be very nagea. But even as a bacha, but it's not true, right? Many, many shaylis come up all the time, which we'll talk about. We'll give you different examples of different shaylis that come up of a regular, normal home with kitchens that have shaylis of Basa V'cholov. And our goal over here is to try and cram in as much information as we can to prevent that, so you'll know at least what's a shayla. You might not know all the answers, but you'll know what's a shayla. So we'll start like this. We'll start with Issa number one. As we said, there are three Issurim of Basava Khalif. The Issa number one is the Issa of Bishal. Okay? That means to cook Basava Khalif is going to be Asa. So, number one, even if the Basava Khalif does not belong to you, you're not allowed to cook it. In fact, there's a Be'alocha, the end of Simon Shin Zayin and Arachayim, that brings down, there's an Issa Amir La'akum of Bishol, Basav Acholov. As though you state the Chavetz Chaim, at the end of Simon Shin Zayin and the Be'alocha, there's an Issa of, of, of Amir La'akum. That means I can't tell my goy in the house, oh, make yourself a cheeseburger. I'm not allowed. Because that's Basav Acholov, I'm telling them to cook it. So therefore, what about working at McDonald's? I had a guy, unfortunately, Rachman al-Slan a Jewish guy, not religious, and uh, he wanted to work in McDonald's, right? So there's a big shayla working at McDonald's. Are you actually cooking basa v'cholov? Is the bishul basa v'cholov going on over here? That's really the shayla over here. First of all, do they cook the, the burger together with... I know you guys didn't put too much thought into this ever in your life, but the mice, you need to. Because you all saw the pictures. I'm sure you've seen the picture of someone in your life. You saw the burger with the steam and you've got the cheese melting down on the sides of that. Is that considered to be bishul basa v'cholov? So the pischei tshuva in the beginning of the summer Pezayin discusses this shayla and has a sophic if this is considered to be bishul basa v'cholov. Is that really bishul? The cheese is cold. I put it on a meat. Is that a problem? So tell me, come on, Psochim, what's with the Targova, which means the bottom one overpowers, which means the bottom one is hot, automatically makes the top one hot. Again, it's a Shiloh, which we're not going into. It's also not a Aish, it's not on the fire. They put it on the bun, right? If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, they put it on the bun. None of you guys did these things. You have to know. There's a lot of lomdus, by the way. You guys don't know how much lomdus is in these things, right? I will talk about it by Hanor. If a person allowed to work, they're clapping the Hanor. I'll give you an example, by the way. You ever notice that most McDonald's are always, there's some red on the sign? You ever wondered why they chose the color red? The benches, or some of the tables, on the, on the ceiling. A lot is red. What's red? So psychologically, what red is, it attracts the eye but it make, you can't see too much of it. So they don't want you to sit in the restaurant too long. It's a fast food restaurant after all. They don't want you to sit there too long and therefore they created red that your eye can't cope so much and you want to get out of there. Another thing, by the way, the bench is not 100% flat. It's slightly tilted so you're not so comfortable. There's a reason for that. So you don't want to stay there too long. Anyway, a lot of long just goes on with when it comes to McDonald's which I had to check into for these halachas. But a couple that's number one. That's halach over there. Next, Derek Bishel Osrito. I'll give you an example. I have a letter, I have a letter in my possession, I think I kept this letter, it's a very harsh of a letter. It came from a certain town in Eretz so I'm not going to say the town because I'm sure you all know where this comes from. This letter came to my door and it says as follows, the following Shaila came up, we want to know what do you think, right? I put it in the book also. What's the halacha? Motzah Shabbos. Motzah Shabbos, I take the tablecloth from the Friday night suda and I put it in the washing machine. And I take the tablecloth from the Shalashidas, which now in the summer can I know we can have milk and shalashidas? And I put it into the washing machine. Bishal Basa Bakhalaf. There it is. I put it on the washing machine, you press go, it's it's boiling hot water, which often it is. Boom! There you go, Basa Bakhalaf. 
Where is it? I, got, I have the letter. I'm not I'm only going to say where it comes from because you guys already know where it came from, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, you know exactly where it came from. That's not, we don't have to say it out, right? So, is that called Boss of a Holof? No? What is that? Boss of a Holof? Yeah. That's Boss of a Holof? Not the Shaila, right? Rabbi Shammai Gross has a Gavaldi Gachuv on this. Hafgana! What do they do with the Hafgana? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you should, you shouldn't, I'm not getting involved, but there are people out there that burn bins, garbage cans. They take a, a lighter, they put it in, boom! One second, hello? In that garbage can is meat, the Heilige Chulim from Shabbos, and some milk left over from the coffee, being a special together. What happened to Basavah Khalaf? The enemy is What happened to Psikvesha? What? I'm not doing it to eat it. Ooh! He says, no, I'm not doing it to eat it. Gewaldig. There's a case of Mishnah that says, like you, that if you're not doing it to eat it, it's okay. And not only that, that you've been a rov and Dover Mishnah and Kayla Gimel has a tshuva about a chocolate bar, which they wanted to find out if it's kosher and if it's got Basavah Cholov inside it. And the only way to find out that it's kosher is by cooking it. So he asks the Shaila, you're allowed to cook it. I'm only doing it in order to know if it's kosher or not kosher. I'm not going to eat it. So he wants the Chibina Rav Tainas that you can be make cool. I'll be discuss the Mishnah. But I said we don't really pass in that way in a regular situation, which means even if we're not going to eat it, for example, can I work in McDonald's and cook Basav Cholov if I'm not going to eat it? Can I be a chef in a non-kosher restaurant if I am not going to eat the food? That's the Shaila. That's all included in, uh, in, the, in the Shaila. But going back to our original Shaila, that's not Derek Bishel. Cooking in a washing machine is not Derek Bishel. And the Torah says it clearly. The Shulchanag Paskins in the beginning of Simeon, Pezayan, Yeridea, Siv Olive, Derek Bishel, Osra, Torah. The normal way of cooking. Nobody cooks in a washing machine. Nobody, maybe a Bochum. Could be, right? Could be people do that, right? Um, nobody cooks in a washing machine. Nobody cooks in a garbage can. And therefore, that's the case that is not Derek Bishel. I had a Shaila like this. A guy calls me up once uh, in America. He was in a barbecue with his company. And um, there was a bunch of goyim there, he had his own food obviously, but um, he said he, all the goyim were sitting doing some picture, Ech, he wasn't involved in that. He was standing by the barbecue, and the problem was that he saw the, the meat which had butter, schmid on it. He wants to flip it because it's burning. Is he allowed to flip it? It's not for me, I'm not going to eat it. I just want to flip the burger. A fellow sends him an email from a university in Massachusetts, how, how do you say it? Whatever it is, somewhere in America. Anyway, and he says to me, I have, this is a big problem I have. The problem I have is, is that I go to the cafeteria to heat up my lunch, whatever it is, and some of my roommates who are going, say to me, oh, Johnny, you're going to the cafeteria. Do me a favor, could you take this sandwich? Could you, do me, could you heat up my sandwich? Just put it in the microwave for a few minutes. He's like, hold it a second, I don't know what's in the sandwich. For all I know, there's salami and butter, and I'm putting it in the microwave, and I'm cooking. You're allowed to do that. This is one of the shilas that people have to realize are very, very nagaya. Again, we're not going to discuss every single one in the situation. Pashtas, a lot of those cases, that's Tolly and Ramor. There's Rebbe Kiva Eger. There's even Hadushi Rebbe Shmuel and Mesachtas Ksuba Simon Zayn that discusses that shaila and Gabi Psikresha. We're not going to go into all the Marmakomis right now. But you have to know whether it's called Derech Bishel, whether it's a Suffolk, whether or not. What about frying something? What if it's only fried? Is that considered to be, or roasting something on a barbecue? As I mentioned before, right? The Piskachuva brings a machloikis gedoli achroinim, whether that is considered to be cooking or not. Okay, Rabbi Sai, today we just got the tip of the iceberg. Started something small. Tomorrow, what we have to do is we have to continue number two, the Indian of Achila. We talked a little bit about Bishul today. We have to talk about eating Basavacholov. And number three, we have to talk about Hana from Basavacholov. This is very negative for anybody that has stocks. In the stock market, if you deal with Robin Hood, you're going to have to know a lot about this. Be'ez HaShem. There's a lot in the Gea. The Seattle will continue tomorrow. Have a beautiful day.